Good morning, everyone, or whatever time you're listening to this. Um, Dr. Halloway here from HealthSpring Chiropractic and Chiron Chiropractic, just doing another video um, interview with one of my dear friends from back in the day. Um, and we've kept a friendship for, in what, 18 years? Uh, 2000, going on back. 2000, year 2000 to 2000. It's, that's crazy. Today's also my birthday, so I'm feeling quite young, 36 years young. And um, so what a, just the goal of these videos, as if you've watched any of them, is just to kind of get different perspectives of health and wellness and just have fun conversations and hopefully entertain people other than myself. But if nothing else, at least I enjoy talking to different health professionals. professionals. So... Miss Tabby, tell me who you are and what you do for a living. Okay, so um, who I am. <laughs> so on top of the grass, I am a nurse. Um, I first worked uh, in a telemetry or a cardiac monitor unit, um, working with open heart patients primarily post-surgery. Um, and then I went into the emergency department, which was always my passion. Um, so I did emergency care for a good about 10 years. Um, and then I traveled around. I was able to see a lot of different places. I um, uh, did travel nursing in Alaska as well as in Colorado. Um, and then I had the opportunity to become a clinical nurse uh, specialist educator um, for the emergency department. Uh, so I was in charge of onboarding and um, doing new hires as well as uh, ensuring ongoing education for current nurses um, in our facilities throughout uh, Arizona as well as Colorado and the western region um, and now I just full-time teach um, I just do that pretty much 40 hours a week uh, I teach classes through the American Heart Association um, uh, so your good old CPR classes advanced cardiac life support and um, pediatric advanced life support as well. Uh, and then I do sometimes so uh, moonlight in um, a standalone ED. So that's pretty much me. That, what I do now. That's a lot of fun stuff. Um, so it is. <laughs> has, in, what is your definition of health today? And has it um, changed over the last 10 18 years? Hmm. So I think my definition of health for me is just being free of disease and injury. Um, and I guess the state of like well being and just uh, feeling just good about me, just myself, mentally, uh, my um, career, even, uh, and then my family life. I think that's just kind of all about you know, being kind of health, because it all affects my health and well-being. Um, has it changed? I think so. I think, of course, um, in my profession, um, I've learned a lot <laughs> in different states, because, of course, we learn a lot about alterations in health um, and how many different things can affect it uh, within and without, our, um, that are out of our control. Um, so, yeah, it probably has changed. I think it's definitely evolved over the years. Um, I think... Um, especially within my master's program that I'm doing right now, we've had to do a lot of conversations on um, and discussions with how people view health in general. And um, it's so different from person to person and how as healthcare professionals and we need to kind of understand that and mold our care to treat them holistically and um, be kind of aware of how uh, their backgrounds ethnicities uh, and experiences will shape their health. So, and that's definitely had an impact on how I do things. That's interesting. How, how has your belief system, how does your belief system affect how you treat patients, how you treat yourself, how, you, how your uh, definition of health has evolved? I think, um, So I think because at basic, I believe, I mean, I just believe in the fact that uh, in a greater power of God um, that has control, um, that leads to my own positivity, I guess. 
um, and the fact that, and then therefore, I think that belief kind of helps me treat my patients in that way, um, to think in a positive nature, uh, that things will get better, that things can get better. Um, uh, and that definitely, I think, affects my health and how I, you know, that I have that power, but also, you know, the belief in God that he's going to, um, that's within his will, um, as far as keeping me healthy. <laughs> uh, and I guess, um, and I just I guess that just moves forward into how I care for patients um, and kind of letting them know that, you know, there's things, of course, that we can do to prevent uh, being sick being ill um, but then at the same time there are things that are just completely out of our control um, but um, I always try to spin it in a positive um, way as much as I can uh, because um, you know there's certain situations um, no matter how much you try to plan for or not um, you just gotta think and do what you can to make it better um, for everybody involved. It might not be even you, um, but those around you, I guess. Does that make sense? No, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's a really good answer. A lot of times I find that the, uh, I'll tell a story that will kind of explain this. I had, early on in my career, I had a patient who uh, had debilitating migraines and she did pretty well under care and then kind of just disappeared which uh -huh. happens in the chiropractic world. I would, I would imagine it happens in your world uh -huh. once someone's feeling better. Uh -huh. um, and I got a letter from her daughter, I don't know, six months later or whatever, like thanking me for giving her her mom back. So like uh -huh. that was like one person removed just because that person got better and their belief system and how their sure. mind worked. So I totally agree with it. You may not even see the effects you're having down the line of being able to help someone. All right. True. Sure. Okay. No, I just, your story, you're telling me that made me think of that story. I hadn't thought about that in a long time. Um, mm -hmm. how, do think, how do you think um, technology is changing? Mm -hmm. Well, since you're teaching, how's technology changed the way that you you learned what you do versus what how you teach what you do? Well, I think technology alone has allowed within healthcare for us to have so many vast opportunities to learn um, yeah. and access to so much uh, like evidence-based articles, information. Um, it's amazing that someone here in Arizona, uh, a surgeon, a surgical resident, uh, to take part in and to experience uh, groundbreaking surgery in England or in somewhere way across the world, thousands of miles away. Mm -hmm. And that's something that um, I think affords education, healthcare professionals, just um, such a unique and evolving opportunity uh, to better the care for our patients because that's where, I mean, that's really the goal of healthcare professionals is to restore health, to maintain health. Mm -hmm. um, and to always give our patients better outcomes. So in my world in education, I mean, uh, I mean, my program alone is online. I mean, what, 15, 20 years ago, this master's program online only probably was just a little thought in someone's mind. Uh, we, I mean, uh, so definitely technology, and that's just the way it's going to go. Um, I think... Uh, even within the hospital setting, my organization itself, um, as we branch out and uh, kind of take on more hospitals uh, with our bedside nurses, how do we um, give them that continued education, the required education that we need to have for them? How do we make that available to all facilities, all hospitals? Um, and so we do a lot of distance learning simulated uh, in order to make sure that it's um, a good learning experience um, for all people involved. So technology is definitely, I think, benefited um, everybody and therefore it kind of trickles down to the patients. Yeah, that's so. awesome. do, where do you think the as a as a, Americans or maybe worldwide, how where do you think the direction of health itself is going? Do you think it's getting better, worse, plateauing? 
I think, you know, we have this really good discussion, of course, about how um, the Affordable Health Care Act affected health care in our um, country. Um, because, of course, it allowed for um, access more, well, seemingly uh, more access to more patients um, that, are, that in which had a lot of gaps. There was a lot of holes, people that did not have coverage and things like that. And I think because of that, um, I feel like it's getting better um, as a whole. I think it's because um, healthcare reform in general has really um, uh, grown awareness as far as uh, for patients um, kind of taking a little bit more accountability and responsibility in their health. Um, I think it's kind of evolved as well to uh, outpatient settings versus actually in hospital care. Um, and I say this because um, our organiz the organization I work for, um, you know, people tend to love it or hate it. <laughs> but um, I think they had the foresight with uh, this um, when the Affordable Health Care Act came out um, to realize that they're going to need a focus on uh, wellness and prevention care versus acute care hospital settings. So that's why they went out and started to have a more um, uh, like clinics, outpatient clinics and primary care facility, uh, primary care and taking um, over like urgent cares and things like that versus, and they put investments into that because they see that healthcare was going that way because we want to prevent them from needing to go into the hospital. And that's a little bit related to um, cost, right? The cost mm -hmm. of healthcare. So I think preventative things um, as far as, um, you know, uh, education, health education to prevent cardiac disease, to prevent a stroke, to prevent um, exposure or risk of cancer, um, is definitely uh, more at the forefront than it used to be um, because of that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes complete sense. How do you feel that, how do you feel how, how alternative medicine has grown, I guess, in the eyes of the general medical profession? Has it grown, do you think? Oh, I think it's definitely grown. Um, for I mean, just for the standalone instance in my um, in our health in my where who I work for, uh, they cover I mean or they cover or they um, acupuncture, uh, chiropractic care. Uh, there's a copay um, and it's uh, but and they also so I think um, and therefore that leads to uh, people that might not have tried it before. Um, like me with acupuncture, I had never tried it before. Um, but because I had um, that offering through my workplace, I was like, sure, let's try it, you know. Um, so things that I learned about in nursing school, which were, you know, alternative therapies back in the early 2000s, now I'm actually using in the recent years. So, and I think that's not only um, true for me, but also everybody else that um, has that benefit through their employers. So I think it definitely has grown. Uh, because of just increased awareness um, on it, and therefore, uh, and I think that just people know about it more, and so therefore, people experience it, and when people experience it and have good benefits from it, um, uh, they tell other people, and that's the big thing. They tell other people, um, and then word of mouth is huge. Uh, so then other people start looking into it, uh, they learn about it, um, and then they themselves then utilize it you know, for creating that need and that want um, for alternative therapies. So I think it's definitely grown. Yeah, interesting. The, the referring and telling people, I think, is one of the, the best ways to grow any business, probably, but definitely with what Correct. I do. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. just, just think about one of my colleagues. How, uh, you're, how, how much Filipino are you? What percentage? How <laughs> much? I'm half. half. I'm half and half. I always say I'm Filipinese. <laughs> So like uh, her entire practice like started from one one Filipino um, individual and then she <laughs> and it just exploded. Do you think culturally um, that affects healthcare? Like oh yes, 
Mm-hmm. Oh Just like, a car- you know how well acupuncture in general is, um, you know, an Eastern healthcare uh, basis, pretty much. Right. Um, and I think because of that, um, definitely those of um, that ethnicity or that background will probably be more apt to do it um, and to experience it. Uh, I mean, take advantage of it. Um, yeah, my acupuncture experience was quite interesting, <laughs> for sure. We'll, we'll leave um, that um, conversation. Uh, <laughs> I said we can talk about what? that. <laughs> <laughs> it was very. It was. It was. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. <laughs> so, during these interviews, I always try to get a little laughter and you're easy to chat with because we oh. forever. but you know, are required to require your best clean joke or any clean joke okay yeah i don't know if it's definitely my best but um i did think of one that i think i heard like i don't know maybe recently it's just such a kitty joke but it is cute um <laughs> uh you probably know it. Um, why, why is six afraid of seven? I don't know why. <laughs> because seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's a good one. I heard. A, uh, I heard um, Ellen. In, you know that what a talk show host or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. She used, that, she used that joke in regards to uh, the iPhone because they they introduced the iPhone. Um, like eight or whatever and then the ten uh-huh so like she's like oh yeah they've never had nine they've never had nine so she's like seven eight nine yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so sorry it wasn't probably better or too funny but uh-huh. that's the only one i could think of <laughs> if you were to go back 18 20 years 10 years what uh, words of wisdom would you give yourself in staying healthy and promoting health and wellness? Um, I think everything in moderation. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, and some things are just, just to remember that some things are just in, out of your control. Um, and you within yourself need to just uh, do the best that you can um, because that power is within you um, as far as to maintain your own health and wellness um, because in doing so that will also affect those around you that is a great answer that's <laughs> okay. a whole teenage chiropractic the power is within you oh Thank you so much for doing the little interview with me. And okay, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. <laughs>